Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. You would not believe the submissions we have oh. received in the Delaney's OK Tire and Langley inbox now that we've brought up old school stereo equipment, including Sansui and Sanyo and Hitachi. All of our guests today, I'm sure John's pleased about this, <laughs> including uh, John Shannon, brought to you by the Vancouver Giants Friday, final Giants regular season home game. They take on Kelowna, fan appreciation night, puck drop, 730. Get your tickets now at VancouverGiants.com slash tickets. Details about playoff tickets, they're going to take on oh. powerful count loops in round one, will be released uh, shortly. And with that, we bring in NHL analyst, co-host of the Bob McCowan podcast. He also does Oilers broadcast on Rogers, uh, John Shannon. John, thanks for doing this. How are you, sir? I am great, boys. How are you? By the way, uh, my first stereo was a Lloyd's. Yes. Lloyd's. Okay. Lloyd's. Uh, and uh, and, it, and it, it didn't have the double cassette. It had a single eight track. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Maybe the worst technology in the history of audio, the the eight track. But we all had them eight in tracks. our cars, at home, whatever the case. Uh, I love those eight tracks. In and out you go. <laughs> that hey. was, if they, but if they ever, if they ever, the spool ever broke or anything like oh, that, you were toast. Yeah, yeah. you were toast. Uh, I can relate. I can relate. So uh, you did both uh, Oilers broadcast uh, this week, uh, yep. both overtime games against San Jose the other night, uh, last night against the Coyotes. John, just 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 admit it. You're doing those games for free just to watch McDavid on a regular basis. If I got that right. <laughs> No, actually, I'm paying them um, <laughs> it, 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 yeah. because it is it is worth every penny hmm. to come to Edmonton and be around this guy. And and let's add uh, Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl, too, because last night um, it was his passing. And, of course, you guys probably talked about the NHLPA playoff or the players poll yesterday. Leon's passing was absolutely magnificent. So so hard, so straight. I mean, he he's just unconscious, and his vision, his vision all over the ice is just spectacular. It's it truly is amazing, and it's just a treat to be around them when they play the game. So I I I I I, I think they're probably going to send me a bill. <laughs> NHLPA player poll. We haven't actually talked about it yet, yet John. But uh, Leon Dreisaitl voted by NHL players as the best passer in the NHL for multiple years now. Four assists uh, last night. Hey, John, what goes through your mind uh, when you hear that Bobby Orr turned seventy-five earlier this week? Well, um, I was there in um, in Chicago. Uh, working on the Canucks broadcast where Bobby's last game was. Mm, wow. uh, and uh, and he, you know, in the old stadium, Donnie, the, the stairs to go up to the ice, he could barely walk up the stairs, mm -hmm. and he was in his early 30s at the time, and uh, you, you just, you, you fell for him. Just an awful situation with surgery and the type of surgeries you had to have in the 70s. Um, but I actually, I, I, I spent some time with Bobby this uh, past summer in, yes. uh, in Niagara Falls, and Man, oh man, he's healthy. He looks great. Uh, we don't have the same politics, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but he's he's his uh, his approach to life is absolutely fantastic, and he's got the same great sense of humor and and love for the game of hockey that he always had. Would we see? Quinn, we're talking from a Vancouver perspective here, uh, John. But would we see Quinn Hughes today if Bobby Orr hadn't come along? That's a good question. Um, you know, I I, I wonder. The whole concept of, you know, the, we asked the question, well, or with Doug Harvey in the previous yeah. generation, yeah. you know, where did Paul Coffey's influence occur for the for for players that that uh, were after him? Uh, I, I think we probably would have seen it. it. It's it's the speed of the game and the skill of the game. Donnie, you know, those Canucks teams we talk about in the 70s, how many skilled guys were on those teams? You know, five. Yeah, five. Mm -hmm. Um, and now, you know, through the, the evolution of the game there, you know, there are 20 skilled guys, everybody can do everything. And now it's those elite players like Quinn and Jack and Luke that, uh, are changing the dynamic of the sport one more time. John, uh, here we go again. The Blackhawks, uh, canceled, uh, pride night. It was supposed to be Sunday against the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, look, mm -hmm. what's going on here, John? It, it, look, why don't they ask the teams in the summer? 
who wants to do it, who doesn't, or scratch the idea. But going into the season and having this pop up is not a good look, John. No, it's not. And by the way, they haven't canceled Pride Night. I believe they've just told them that they're not going to wear the warm right, sweater. Right, right. They're not wearing the jerseys then. So, so um, and, and the problem has become, in so many ways, the political and religious issues yep. that some players feel. Um, I don't feel them, but I. But you do have to respect at some point um, a, a few of uh, of these beliefs that you know are are different we you know the whole the chicago one they've pointed directly at russia yeah. about their their whole uh, political uh, uh attitude towards the gay and and alternate community and it's 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 difficult for us to argue with yeah it really is it, it's it's it is like a little bit like ovechkin's um political stand when he still has family in russia yep. and yep. Yeah. He doesn't want to criticize Putin too publicly, yeah. so it, it's it's difficult. We're and and we are in a we're we're in a in a society now that communication is instantaneous. It doesn't take four days for news to get from Moscow to Toronto or Chicago. Yeah. It ha happens in a in a millisecond, and yeah. so it, it it just it it's a growing concern. I I would suspect we will not see any of these teams have these sweaters next year. That's my yeah. gut. Yeah. I haven't talked to anybody, but I think that they've realized maybe we have gone to a line and we don't like to your point, yeah. Rick, we don't want the microscope yeah, on us one more yeah. time. It's embarrassing. Yeah. And I don't think you can force the players. I don't think you can force the players to wear them. Yeah. They're because yeah. they're not the real sweaters. Yep, absolutely. I heard you talk about uh, OEL and a buyout earlier this week on another show in Vancouver. Um I don't know what the name of the there show is. There are other is. shows? <laughs> are there other shows in Vancouver, John? Uh, uh, not, apparently, not we only know one. On Thursdays. <laughs> not on Thursdays, there's only one big show. Look, uh, Rick Tockett came out yesterday and said it very nicely. OEL is going to play next year. He's not going to be bought out. So we're still trying to figure out. Um, the Canucks have some targets on July 1st, John. They have some uh, July 1st targets. But in order to get those July 1st targets, they got to clear cap space, either vis-a-vis -vis through a trade, Hey, by the way, we had John McKeechee, your pal, on earlier this week. He dropped your name. Um, <laughs> where am I going here? Anyways, they got to create space, and they can do that uh, by yeah. a bio. You sound like McKeechee asking this question. 500 uh, <laughs> a word uh, question. But anyways, do you still anticipate a buyout in Vancouver, John? I think there has to be at least yep. at least one, maybe two. Oh, uh, whether it's whether it's Oliver Ekman Larson, I I can understand and Rick uh, and respect Rick's position on that one. Yeah, but there I I think you know I don't think they want to have any right. No, but uh, they they don't want to do any buyouts. They don't want any of the dead cash on the uh, on the ledger at all in the next couple of years. But by the time this team uh, gets through the Stanley Cup playoffs, doing all their planning, getting ready for the draft, finding out where they do sit in the draft, uh, and then measuring all their assets they might have to you know pay a few teams with draft picks in order to have them take some of their players or if they can't do that before july the first then they are going to have to have some buyouts yeah big time uh, and common very sense just yeah. common sense very very quickly uh, john we brought up uh Russian players in the National Hockey League, and it relates to this subject as well. The WBC, so many people talking about it, including Connor McDavid y yesterday. The return of the World Cup of Hockey or Olympic participation. Uh, John, at this point, uh, the uh, subject of Russian players makes that really difficult, is it not? Well, I, I think it's black or white right now. And I talked to some people at the league yesterday and said, "Are you? would you ever contemplate a World Cup without Russia? And the answer right now is no. Mm. They wouldn't contemplate it, you, you know. But here, on the other side of of, uh, of the page, Donnie, is mm. did we miss them in Halifax at the World Juniors? Mm, yeah. Did somebody say, "Wow, we miss Russia"? Now, the World Junior might be a little different tournament, yeah. but we, it, you know, we we might have to at a certain point if the conflict in Ukraine continues, we might have to contemplate a World Cup without Russia. Uh, but there, they are not there yet. It, pure and simple, they are not prepared to have a World Cup without Russia. And with the Federation announcing what they did yesterday, uh, you know, who knows when that will occur? Because I don't think sanctions yeah. against Russia end the day the, the conflict ends. I don't. 
you know, I, I think that that's a that it, it's still going to be an issue well after uh, there is some sort of peace accord between Russia and Ukraine. Okay, get back to listening listening to uh, Steppenwolf on your Lloyd system, uh, John. And CCR. not only that, it was a, a great radio. And, and when the clouds were in low in the Okanagan Valley at four in the afternoon, you could get fourteen ten C fun and have a battle oh, blast oh. with our with our with our buddy Bob Bovin. Yep. <laughs> you know. C fun was such a good station. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for this. Don't forget Ralph Raccoon Carney. Thanks, John. <laughs> Who? Latrimo in the Who? morning. Don't forget yeah, Latrimo okay. in the morning, boys. The late, great Fred Latrimo. Yeah. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. We could go on and on.